And so many conflicting reports out there. How do I know or what to trust? And like everything else, Peter, everything's gotten kind of open for interpretation or political. It's true, and it's a great question. Look, I think we need to step back and understand that even before this pandemic of coronavirus, which of course is terrible and it's taken a loss of life and it's truly ripped families apart, I wanna posit to you all that there is a bigger, greater societal threat, and that is the pandemic of dishonesty. And that ties into your question because we've all been you know, lied to over and over over again by you know, party figures. And what happened with this pandemic is we saw it coming like a wave. And you know, it, instead of one leader saying, okay, everyone, here's what's happening. Here's the data. Uh, here's objectively what's true. We all need to in lockstep take an action. You know, if that had happened, we all would have looked at that person and said, okay, that makes sense. I trust you. And we would have just moved off in one direction. Instead, what did we see? We saw leaders of all kinds go in 50 different directions leading us in all sorts of places. And of course, in the absence of absolute truth and, and that leadership, what do we get? We get chaos, and that's what we've gotten to. So it's a great question, wondering whom should I trust? You know, Where should I be getting information? And the answer is we all need to be fact checkers. We all right now, we cannot rely on one data source, one news outlet, one aunt who loves to spout off, uh, spout off on Facebook. It's just not something we as a society can risk anymore. It's up to us to get multiple sources to go to the epidemiologists out there. There are tons of them blogging and giving alternative uh, views on what, what may happen and what is going on. And it really is up to us to become our own little news sources and take in the best data we can and make our own decisions because that's the only way that we're going to allow the fear factor to come down because we'll just have more knowledge. Yeah, that's good advice. Our uh, next one coming in, Peter, is I have friends and family members who are not listening to stay-at-home quarantine orders. What can I do? Yeah, another great one. And I think what we see some people doing is taking to social media and, you know, railing against these folks and protesting and doing all kinds of things that truly are just not helpful. I mean, we wouldn't communicate that way uh, to a friend or family member or colleague that we cared about. So I think the last thing we need to do is, you know, take to social media against these others, right, that we've classified. Um, well, that's not us. They're, they're the, the dumb people aren't listening. That's not the way to go. Instead, we have to be honest about the people around us. We're all operating from wherever our mindset's at at that moment. No one makes a decision that they inherently think is bad, right? We don't go around thinking, well, I, I love making bad decisions. That's what I do all day. <laughs> Every person who's making a decision is doing it because they think that's the best thing to do. The best thing we can do if we have friends or family members who aren't listening to stay at home orders is to ask them about it. Say, hey, you know, what kinds of data and stories are you looking at? You know, I'd like to understand a bit more about your position, because if we can get others to open up to us so we can understand what's in their minds, that's the only way we can begin to hope to change their mindsets as we roll along and move forward. That's mm -hmm. how you build a unity around facts you can agree on. Mm -hmm. Good, good stuff right there. Okay.